When we travel to another country, usually we tend to focus mainly on the main attractions and the touristy areas, and we miss the opportunity to experience the real local life of that specific place. That is why in this video I would like to show you what the day to day in Istanbul looks like because I know that many of you might be curious so that is why I really wanted to make this video. Something I really like is that we have plenty of places where we can take walks on the seaside. So for example here locals they love uh, walking by the seaside also since we have many green areas especially near the seaside many people also enjoyed having picnics especially on weekends also when visiting istanbul and if you get to to go further than the main touristy areas you will get surprised on how modern the city is there are many areas that truly really, there are many modern buildings very new buildings and it is a very interesting mix Turks do not only eat kebab or mainly dishes made out of meat. Actually, there are plenty of dishes that they really enjoy, especially those ones that are more homemade and made with olive oil that are very healthy, very natural. So no, Turks will not only eat meat or kebabs. Something that also I love of Istanbul is that every day of the week, there are certain local bazaars that you can find on the streets on each neighborhood so for example in, in my neighborhood every thursday we can find these bazaars where we can find literally everything items for home uh, also foods fresh vegetables and fruits and that is something that you will get surprised in istanbul at the same time also we have plenty of supermarkets in every neighborhood it's not like in other countries like for example uh, in the US that just to go get groceries many times you have to get in the car and go to the nearest Walmart or supermarkets of uh, like that type but here in reality you can find plenty of supermarkets in every corner so you can easily go walk and go to the nearest supermarket and within five minutes you will uh, you can do all your shopping and go back home in case that you don't know either uh, Turkish people they really consume a lot of bread literally in every meal they will have bread on the table and they really consume it so something that you will also see a lot here in general in turkey is that there are plenty of food in which they are called in english bakeries and you can buy freshly made bread all day long so you will find also plenty of those food ins or bakeries in every single neighborhood also, the Asian side of Istanbul is much more quiet and more peaceful than the European side. I have lived in, on both sides. And let me tell you that I truly enjoy much more living on the Asian side. It's much better, it's quieter, a bit more and less chaotic. Some of you have asked me as well, what's the difference between the European side and the Asian side, if there's any difference? Actually, there is no difference at all. The only thing is the ge geographical location. And these both sides are divided by the Bosphorus Strait. It's not a river, it is a strait, natural strait. And both continents are connected by three bridges. So there is no difference except for the location. Everything is exactly the same. And something that goes on here in the day to day in Istanbul is that people living here, they really cross from side to side almost every single day because there are people living on the on the Asian side or in the European side, but they work on the other side. So they need to take transportation like ferries. There is also like the Marmaray, which is this train that takes you from continent to continent and goes under the Bosphorus. You can cross by car through, uh, through any of the bridges. So it is something very interesting and this is something that it's daily life in Istanbul. Something that Turks really love, especially when it comes to entertainment, is football. Yes, Turkish people really love football and either if they support Galatasaray, Besiktas, Fenerbahce or any other uh, Turkish league, they really enjoy it. And even before a match, if they are attending to a football match, uh, before the match they usually go to the main areas where their club is based like for example Besiktas or Katiko in case of, of Fenerbahce and they, start, and they start like pre-partying before the match and having a good time with the friends and then they head all together to the, to the match. So yeah, Turks love football. Especially summer, there are many uh, cultural events and exhibitions and also even fest uh, music festivals concerts and also many people especially like the young uh, the younger generations is it is the moment where they get together even more with their friends they go to bars they go to pubs they they have picnics on the seaside in summer is really lively 
Also something that I really enjoy is that in metro stations or even on the ferries, uh, when you're boarding them, you will find in many of them that there are these artists uh, playing their music, either uh, with a guitar or singing, or even with violin some, sometimes uh, as well. So this is something that I truly enjoy when these local artists are perform performing in these uh, metro stations or on ferries. Also in summer, because everything happens in summer, and of course, it's a time when it's uh, summer holidays from school and everything. And we have many beaches around here, Istanbul. Also, we have the Princess Islands, which if you haven't realized, we have them just behind me here. So also many locals love going to the islands, to the beach clubs, and also there are sometimes uh, DJs, uh, DJs playing. So they really love having fun, especially in summer. Something that I love about Turkish culture is that they most of the times, like let's say 90% because I'm not going to say that all of them do it because there are people that do not really like this situation but, or, or animals, it happens everywhere. But 90% of people here, they really take care of in general all animals, especially cats. Uh, if you haven't heard this, which I am sure who hasn't, is that Turkey is the city of cats and that is totally true. When you come to, to Istanbul you will see plenty of stray cats but in reality they are not just strays, they are like the community pets because most of the people really take care of them, they feed them, they love them, they even make homes for, for them and they are really well taken care of. So yeah, that is something that I really love, the cats in Istanbul. Another thing that I have noticed here, and this is something that really got my attention when I first came uh, to Turkey, was that here uh, dryers are not that common. So what I have seen is that most of people, maybe 90% of them, this is what I have seen at least, is that most of women hang their, their uh, washed clothes in the balconies. So uh, you will see them there from your uh, neighbor buildings, from everybody. To be honest, I'm not in that point that I can do that. I don't know, like I don't like everybody seeing my clothes hanging there. So I just hang them in, in my little balcony inside or in one room, but like outside from the balcony for everybody to see, I don't do that, but I have seen that a lot. It doesn't matter if it's summer or winter, chai or Turkish tea is always welcome. And the hotter it is, the better. Another thing that is very common here are the famous tea houses. And yeah, the tea houses, these are uh, places where usually men or the senior, the senior men go there. And for example, they're also, besides uh, having tea and coffee, they're also playing some games. Like for example, there is a Turkish game which, which is called OK. So usually when you're walking somewhere at that time, you can you can hear like all the pieces you know like these plastic or wooden pieces like they're changing and everything so that is something very common and that really i remember when i came here i was wondering all all the time like what's that sound what's that sound and but now I, of course I, I'm, I'm used to it but if you are new to the city or if you're just a tourist and, and if you're in a very local area you might wonder about those sounds coming from the tea houses Another thing that really a lot of people uh, wonder about this is that if there are churches or even synagogues in the city. And let me tell you that, yeah, there are many churches and synagogues that are Catholic churches, Orthodox churches, and there are like three or four synagogues uh, in the city. So yeah, I, they're open to public. Uh, if you are Catholic, if you are Christian, Orthodox or, what, or whatever, you can go and, and pray there. There is no problem. You will really find them. Also, some people have asked me because they have seen on social media that during December, usually they see some places or shops adorned with Christmas, with Santa Claus and all of these uh, traditional Christmas ornaments. So let me tell you that, okay, the majority of people are Muslim, but also there are Turks who are Christians or even Catholics or don't have like a religion so there's a little bit of everything but in reality christmas is not celebrated here they are usually doing it because of new year's so they usually connect that with new year's but of course because of the population there are many foreigners living here and also it's been spreading a little bit more so it is easier for us to find more more ornaments and things and even places where we can have dinner for christmas as well also something that really su surprised me, but of course I'm already used to it, is that here it's very common and probably when you're walking on the street you will see either two men or two women 
uh, if they are very close friends or even relatives, they are going to be walking on the streets holding the arms and that is very common to see here but for example in my case at first it, it was because i'm a person who likes uh, keeping my personal space i'm not really like uh, touching all, all other people or whatsoever so when that first happened to me i was like uh, i don't know how to act so don't get confused if that happens that is quite common here especially am among very good friends and either to men or to women Another thing is that Istanbul is a very, very walkable city. It's not like another, uh, another cities or parts, uh, like for example, many cities in the US that you really need a car. For example, in the city where I come from, from Mexico, not Mexico City, it's another city in the north part of, of Mexico border with, with El Paso, Texas. You really need to have a car to move comfortably. Like it's not a city where you can really walk comfortable. But here in Istanbul, it's totally different. There are many places actually you can go anywhere you want by foot uh, also the, the the transportation system is very good you will find plenty of them not just buses or metros but you will also find the ferries uh, cable cars funiculars the trams uh, the marmaray which is a train that connects from continent to continent to continent and even goes under the bosphorus so yeah i mean istanbul is a it's an amazing city for that you don't really need to have a car if you don't want to you can either walk or use the public transportation traffic in istanbul can be unbearable at peak times and this is something that really surprised me especially as someone that what that is coming from a very small city where basically the total population of my city it was is less than 2 million people so when i came here and 60 million people and a lot of traffic that is something that wow it was driving me crazy at first right now of course i, I already got used to it and yeah here istanbul can be quite chaotic a lot of traffic so that is why it is much better moving on your own in public transportation you will save a lot of time and my favorite part that this is part of a daily life of every person living in these cities are the ferries the ferries are part of our daily public transportation especially we if we are working in the european side or in the asian side and we have to be crossing almost daily and they are very enjoyable uh, turkish you use them every single day at all times and this is something that i really love and that still surprises me at some point because i said how can this be possible within 20 minutes, 15 minutes, we can be on the Asian side already. So this is something that I really love as well. And when it comes to communicating with locals, especially as a foreigner, let me tell you that it is not that easy because Turkish do not speak, like not all of them speak English and other languages like Spanish or any other, they will not speak. So maybe they can understand you, but since they haven't really had the opportunity to really practice English, that is why they have problems speaking it. But even then, if you cannot understand each other, they will do everything to help you if you need any, any help with anything. That is why I also recommend that if you're thinking of staying here in the city for a long time, um, you have to learn the language at least the basic because that really it's gonna help you a lot. And believe me, also Turks love when us as foreigners try to speak with them in their own language they really like it they really love it and they treat you differently as well so this was my perspective of the daily life in istanbul as a mexican i know that many of you might have a different perspective and that's okay not everybody perceive things as the same but this is like something gen general that probably most of us have realized when we when we moved here and as a tourist if you have the opportunity to go away from the main touristy areas to really explore the daily life in the city that's even more fascinating because you're getting to know as well the culture if you liked the video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this every week about istanbul and turkey see you next time bye bye